47. What charge would be needed on F2 to generate an ion with a bond order of 2? Okay, so here I have the correct molecular orbital diagram that is used for fluorine. And just remember that the orbitals that are on the left and the right side are due to the atoms. So here are your atomic orbitals, aka just for your atom. So in this case, it's just one fluorine on the left and one fluorine on the right. And then in the middle is always your molecular orbital. So that's when your two fluorines combine and you have F2. All right. So now we're dealing with bond order. They did tell us that the bond order was two and bond order always goes with the special formula. So the formula is this. Now a bond order is just basically talking about the number of bonding electrons minus antibonding divided by two. And remember the antibonding is always, you know, the antibonding can always be seen by looking at stars. So if I just go through here and I just notice that some of these orbitals have stars, those are your antibonding orbitals. So you got four antibonding and the other four that have no stars, those are your bonding orbitals. So we know that we have a bond order of two, but we don't specifically know the number of bonding electrons and the number of antibonding, but that's okay. Let's just try to simplify this formula. So I'm going to say two equals, because that's the bonding order, the number of bonding electrons, maybe I'll just say bonding, just to save some space. So bonding electrons minus antibonding electrons. And this is now divided by two. And maybe I can just make this a little bit bigger. Beautiful. And now let's just solve cross multiply, right? Two times two. So I get basically four equals my number of bonding electrons minus my antibonding. Okay, so we're getting somewhere here. Now just know that there can never be a negative value for your bonding electrons or your antibonding electrons, right? These values have to be positive. So if I hypothetically think of some arrangements of electrons to subtract to get to four, I could just play this like mental game, right? Basically, if I had eight bonding electrons and I had four antibonding, when you subtract them, you could get a four. If I have, I don't know, six bonding and two antibonding, I could get four as a difference. If I have 10 bonding minus, uh, what is that, six, I could get four. So the whole thing here is that in order to make this work, seems like your bonding amount has to be larger than your antibonding. So just keep that in mind. But as of right now, I don't really know how many bonding electrons I have and how many antibonding, but I do know that when I subtract them, it's gotta be equal to four. And the bonding obviously has to be more. So let's go for it. Let's just see what's going on without a charge, right? If I was just dealing with F2. So keep in mind that fluorine has on the periodic table seven valence electrons. So that means seven electrons on the left, seven electrons on the right. And you gotta start from the bottom and go up in energy to fill your electrons. So I have to start here, one, and now I have to fill this one, two, before I go up to here. So I have two, I have a total of seven, so that's one, two, three, four, five, double back, six, seven. The same thing goes here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now your total for your atoms have to equal the combined total for your molecules. So if you have seven on the left and the right side, I need a total of 14 because seven plus seven is 14. So same exact idea. I gotta start from the bottom and work my way up. And maybe what I'll do is, maybe I'll just put the F2 on the bottom here. And maybe I'll do that for the fluorine as well, just so that we don't get confused here. 
So here's just the F, here's just the F. Okay. So I'm starting from the bottom. One, two. Remember, I need a total of 14. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm coming over here. Seven, eight, double back. Nine, 10, going up here. 11, 12, 13, 14. So let's just see what's going on in terms of your bonding and your antibonding electrons. So for a neutral, so for a neutral F2, you have how many bonding electrons? Remember, it's all the ones that have no star. So I have two, four, six, eight electrons. So I have eight bonding electrons. And now let's see, if I minus the number of antibonding, remember you have four also antibonding electrons. This one has no electrons, so no worry about that. But now two, four, six. So a neutral F2 would only have a difference of two. This is not what we're looking for. So we need to just manipulate it a little bit just to get a four. Now remember, when you're getting rid of, when you're getting rid of electrons, you always get rid of from the highest ones going down. So since you have four electrons here and they're in the antibonding orbitals, you're gonna be chipping away at your antibonding number. And if you're chipping away, this number is gonna drop. So that means that the eight is going to stay. So now we're getting charged up here. We're becoming an ion. So the eight bonding is gonna stay, but remember, we want that number of four. So what is that number of bonding electrons that we need? Four minus four is eight. And what happened from six to four? Well, you dropped two. And in that case, you drop two electrons. So I go to my top energy and I say, Whoa, goodbye one, goodbye two. So how many total electrons did you lose? You lost two. And when you're losing electrons, that's a plus sign. So this had to have been Fe plus two. And that, not Fe, I don't know why I said Fe, F2. <laughs> with the plus two charge. That will drop your antibonding down to four. Eight minus four is four. That's the number we're looking for. And that is the end of this question. What'd you think? This one I like. This one was a little conceptual, thinking outside the box. I like this question. What'd you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're almost at 30,000 subs and it's all because of you guys. Thank you, each and every one of you. I really do appreciate you. My brother appreciates, appreciates. Can I speak? I don't think so. But yet again, it's 3.17 a.m. in the morning. But anyway, we, we both appreciate you. We're staying up late. We're working, you know, as much as we can to get these videos out to you guys. So thank you for your patience. Thanks for all your kind comments. We're trying our best here. And we're just trying to help you guys learn. That's all that we're trying to do. And seems like we're getting it done. One video at a time. Thank you so much. Good luck on your tests and quizzes. I'm rooting for you guys. And let me know how you do. All right? I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.